So my name's Gehan Patharaja, I'm the lead car handling designer in the racing studio at Codemasters. Uh, today I'm going to take you through uh, the new drift mode in Grid Autosport. So the first thing you'll notice about Grid Autosport is that it's, the balance of the handling is a bit more simulation than, than it was shown in Grid 2, so the cars can slide Fair bit. This is obviously a drift setup car. And the aim is to drift past the apexes, keep the power consistent all the way through the corner so as to keep the cars lit up and pull off a, a steep angle. The steeper the better, you get more points, and the further you drift, the more points you get as well. And as you can see, I did pretty well on that last corner. And the good thing about drift in auto, auto sport is yeah, you can mess it up, you can do things like that. Um, it's, you, can, you can initiate a drift in a number of ways. I mean, just there for this hairpin that you just saw, I used the handbrake, a dabber handbrake, just to, to lock the rear wheels and bring the, bring the rear round. Here I'm going to turn out, brake, so it's a weight transfer, a little hip clip thing there, so you, you can transfer the weight and slide the car. And if I was in manual, I could also lock shift as well, so I could simply shift into a lower gear and, you know, brake traction on the rear. So it's all about weight transfer and braking traction on the rear. Um, so you can see here, I'm going to go through another gated section. Um, starting a drift, it only count, counts during the section and once I've finished it gives you a result. There you go, I've got five stars. And, and now I'm just just drifting as close to the edge as I can to get more, more, more score towards the edges. And that's basically drift. So th that vehicle that you saw or that you see at the moment is a um, it's a Nissan Silvia modified for drift, so the, the steering lock on the front is, is very wide, far wider than you would get on a normal road car, so it can feel initially twitchy at first, however that helps to get the recoverability and the steep angle and drift that you're looking for. So sure, it feels nothing like any of the other cars in the game, but that's actually how our pro drift car is set up. Um, we uh, set our, our drift cars up with um, James Dean, who works for Drift All Stars, um, and you know we spent a long time sitting down trying out the car handling with him and made some significant changes and we were really happy with the result as was he and um, it works an absolute treat on a 900 degree steering wheel um, you know and we we're really pleased with the final product. The good thing about manual is you can just hold the gear for you and it doesn't go any further. So here I'm going to go straight to second, didn't even use handbrake, and brake and traction. And in fact actually it's easier than before, so I'm just going to hold second the whole way. That's the good thing about manual. And then into third on the straight, maybe fourth if I feel like it. Down to second, and that was a cheap bit, a dab of handbrake unfortunately, and again. So I use handbrake just to get the rear out a little bit more. Now. Yeah, okay. So you, if you approach the corner with throttle down, um, obviously the weight's transferred to the rear. Sorry. Yeah, and it, you know, you gotta overcome the understeer with the handbrake. That's the general principle. Uh, but we got a first lock shift on the first corner. Never again. Well, that worked there if it weren't for clipping the clock cone. You can see how steep an angle you can get out of this now. Far more than you would do previously. There you go, lock shift into second, no handbrake. You don't get any extra points, but it's just another technique for you to use, aside from braking and just uh, getting the weight on the nose and, and powering through. There are various techniques for drift. 